I, uh, I teach intro to writing at USC. That's a, yes, great. You went there? Okay, nice. I was gonna say that's a nightmare that I live. Monday, Wednesday, Friday, GFS 104 is the classroom. You could come visit, you could come guest speak. Anyone can guest speak. You just start speaking, you know? They don't know anything, so it doesn't matter. I had one of the star football players in my class uh, told the students they could write a story about anything. He wrote a story about wanting to fuck his teacher. Pretty cool. My name's Amy Silverberg, and the story of the teacher's name was Jamie Goldstein. Very close. In that story, he said he wanted to have sex with the teacher on the handlebars of his bicycle. And that afterwards, she would like it very much and feel fulfilled. And I was like, you took the teacher's pleasure into account. B plus, baby, right? <laughs> Not everybody does. I always pick uh, books for them to read. Uh, one of my students goes, uh, what are we gonna read this semester? Is it gonna be fun, exciting? Will there be explosions, sex? I was like, Virginia Woolf writes about boobs. He goes, what kind? <laughs> Wild question, the two, the normal two. He was like, I wanna read The Fast and the Furious. I was like, that's not a book. <laughs> there are more Fast and the Furious movies than Men Who've Made Me Come. And the whole class was like, why are you telling us this? And I was like, I don't know. This whole semester, uh, I've been teaching intro to poetry, uh, which I'm not an expert on. I told the students they could write about their favorite poem. One of my students wanted to write about the poem that Kobe Bryant recited when he retired from basketball. <laughs> Are you guys familiar with that poem? It's called Dear Basketball. <laughs> I said, what do you like about the poem? And he said, I like that it's a letter to basketball. So I was like, I got that from the deer. <laughs> So I said, you just have to convince me in your paper that Kobe Bryant is a poet. And he said, no problem. So the first line of the paper, he said, two lanes diverged on a court and Kobe Bryant took the one less dunked on. It's like, pretty cool. Last line of the paper, he said, I don't know if Kobe Bryant is a great poet, but I know he's a better poet than poets are basketball players. Can't argue with that. Very last page was just a picture of Kobe Bryant dunking on Walt Whitman. <laughs> Photoshopped. I was like, another B plus, baby. Been doing that a lot, I've been teaching a lot. Uh, so now for extra money, I'm currently editing rich women's novels. That's what I do for extra money. Um, it's mainly what I came here to talk about, is I'm editing a woman's novel. She lives in Malibu. Her kids have gone off to college. And uh, the whole book is just about her fucking werewolves. That's the entire, that's the entire plot of the book, is a woman, a, a protagonist, who looks and sounds like her, uh, moves through the forest and comes upon different werewolves and they fuck her up against a tree on their hind legs. No werewolves are doing it doggy style. They're all doing it standing up. And after they have sex with her, they give her a key, which then unlocks the, a back room of the forest that then will uh, solve a mystery. We've been working on the book for three years and we don't know the mystery yet that's being solved, but I can tell you that there are 35 werewolf characters currently. I said, I think 35 is too much and you're paying me to edit, so I wanna give you good advice. And she said, Janet from Tennis likes the werewolves. So I said, fine, do whatever you want. The strangest thing about the book is that the uh, werewolves' names change depending on how high the moon is, they become more or less werewolf-like. So if the moon is really high, their names are like Fang or Talon, and they're in cut-off denim <laughs> vests. 
And then if the moon is lower, their names are like Raul <laughs> or Tony, Jared, and they're wearing flannels, striped t-shirts, a hoodie. <laughs> it's wild. Uh, so finally I met her husband. He was sitting at their kitchen table in Malibu and he said, who are you? And I said, I'm your wife's editor. And he said, Jesus Christ, and just walked right out. <laughs> he had no idea what he was paying for. Most recently she said, we've always planned to self-publish it. And she said, listen, I'm going to acknowledge you in the acknowledgements. I wanna make sure that your name is on this. And I said, whatever you do, please don't put my name on it. I don't want to be in any way associated with it. And now she's like, I don't think that we should try to self-publish it. I think that I should send it to Penguin. So now she's put it in a manila envelope and has addressed the envelope to Penguin. Just, that's what it says. Uh, and she said, if it gets published, you and I are going straight to the top. I said, once again, it's just you. And if it gets published before my book, it will be my suicide note. I will be, I will write on the book. Listen, the whole novel, uh, we haven't come up with a title yet. Working title is, uh, Talon under the moonlight, or again, Fang under the moonlight. If you have a preference, don't even tell me. I don't even want to know. If you see this book out in a few years, uh, know that someone suffered greatly bringing it to fruition. I'm Amy Silverberg. Thank you very much. Give it up again for your host. Amy Silverberg, ladies and gentlemen.